the Son of God. I believe all these things which thou hast spoken. Oh Lord, have mercy. According to thy abundant mercy, which thou hast had upon the people of Nephi, have upon me and my people. is gone. Mother, he should be laid in the sepulcher. My queen, Ammon is a prophet of a holy God, and he has power to do many mighty works in his name. Abish, bring it to me. What would you have me do? It has been made known unto me that thou art a prophet of a holy God. If this is the case, I would that ye should go in and see my husband. For some say that he is not dead. But others say that he is dead and that he stinketh. And that he ought to be placed in the sepulchre. But as for myself, to me, he doth not stink. He is not dead, but he sleepeth in God. And on the morrow he shall rise again. Therefore bury him not. Believest thou this? I have had no witness save thy word, and the word of our servants. Nevertheless, I believe it shall be, according as thou hast said. Blessed art thou because of thy exceeding faith. There has not been such great faith among all the people of the Nephites. Blessed be the name of God, and blessed art thou. For as sure as thou livest, I have seen my Redeemer. And he shall come forth and be born of a woman. And he shall redeem all mankind who believe his name. Oh God. 
I thank thee for what thou hast done for this people. in his house, where he has suffered a Nephi to remain in his land. The king hath brought this evil upon his house, because he slew his servant. That man killed my brother. <gasps> he is the great spirit. He is a prophet, sent from God. He is a monster, sent by the Nephites to torment us. O oh, blessed Jesus, who hath saved me from an awful hell. O oh, blessed God, have mercy on this people. This is a man of God, and he has taught me many things. He has taught me about the creation of the world and the fall of man. He has taught me about the coming of our Redeemer. I have seen my Redeemer, and my heart has been changed. As has mine. Let us teach the people the things of God. Zoramites bow down to idols. They have fallen into grave errors and no longer keep the commandments of God. They pervert the ways of the Lord. We also fear that they will enter into a correspondence with the Lamanites, which would be the means of a great loss for us. What should we do? The preaching of the word has a great tendency to lead the people to do that which is just. It has had more powerful effect upon the minds of the people than the sword or anything else. Let us try the virtue of the word of God.
and a perverse people. Their hearts are set upon gold, silver, and upon all manner of fine goods. They worship in a manner which I have never beheld. Their hearts are lifted up into great boasting in their pride. Oh, how long, O oh Lord, wilt thou suffer that thy servants shall dwell here below in the flesh? To behold such gross wickedness among the children of men, is exceedingly sorrowful. Wilt thou comfort my soul in Christ? Lord, wilt thou grant unto me that I may have strength, that I may suffer with patience these afflictions which shall come upon me because of the iniquity of this people. O Lord, wilt thou comfort my soul and give unto me success and also my fellow laborers who are with me. Yea, wilt thou comfort their souls in Christ? Wilt thou grant unto them that they may have strength, that they may bear their afflictions which shall come upon them because of the iniquities of this people? O Lord, wilt thou grant unto us that we may have success in bringing them again unto thee in Christ? O Lord, their souls are precious. And many of them are our brethren. Therefore, give unto us, O Lord, power and wisdom, that we may bring these, our brethren, again unto thee. Observe the performances of the church, to continue in prayer and supplication unto God daily, that she might not enter into temptation. And what shall these, my brethren, do? They are despised of all men because of their poverty, especially by our priests. They have cast us out of our synagogues, which we have labored abundantly to build with our own hands. They cast us out because of our exceeding poverty. Now we have no place to worship our God. What shall we do? Do you suppose that you cannot worship God save it be in your synagogues only? Do you suppose that you must not worship God only once in a week? It is well that you are cast out of your synagogues, that you may learn wisdom. For it is because you are cast out that you are brought to a lowliness of heart. For you are necessarily brought to be humble. And now, because you are compelled to be humble, blessed are ye. For a man sometimes, if he is compelled to be humble, seeketh repentance. And now surely whosoever repenteth shall find mercy. And he that findeth mercy and endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. And because you were compelled to be humble, you were blessed. 
Do you not suppose that they are more blessed who truly humbled themselves because of the word? Yea. He that truly humbleth himself, repenteth of his sins, and endureth to the end, the same shall be blessed. There are many who do say, If thou wilt show unto us a sign from heaven, then we shall believe. Now I ask, is this faith? Nay. Faith is not to have a perfect knowledge of things. Therefore, if ye have faith, ye hope for things which are not seen, which are true. Now, God imparteth his word by angels unto men. Yea, not only men, but women also. Now, this is not all. Little children do have words given unto them many times, which confound the wise and the learned. Now, as I said concerning faith, that it was not a perfect knowledge, even so it is with my words. Ye cannot know of their surety at first unto perfection, any more than faith is a perfect knowledge. If ye will experiment upon my words, and exercise, a particle of faith. Yea, even if you can no more than desire to believe, let this desire work in you until you can give place for a portion of my words. We will compare the word unto a seed. If ye give place that a seed may be planted in your heart, behold, if it be a true seed, or a good seed, if ye do not cast it out by your unbelief that ye will resist the Spirit of the Lord, behold, it will begin to swell within your breasts. And when you feel these swelling motions, you begin to say within yourselves, it must needs be that this is a good seed or that the word is good, for it beginneth to enlarge my soul. Yea, it beginneth to enlighten my understanding. Yea, it beginneth to be delicious to me. And now, behold, is your knowledge perfect? Yea, your knowledge is perfect in that thing. And as the tree beginneth to grow, you will say, let us nourish it with great care that it may get root, that it may grow up and bring forth fruit unto us. But if ye neglect the tree and take no thought for its nourishment, behold, it will not get any root. And when the heat of the sun cometh, it withers away and you cast it out. Now, this is not because the seed was not good, but it is because your ground is barren and you will not nourish the tree. If you will not nourish the word, looking forward with an eye of faith to the fruit thereof, you can never pluck of the fruit the tree of life. But if you will nourish the word by your faith, with great diligence and with patience, looking forward to the fruit thereof, it shall take root. And behold, it shall be a tree springing up unto everlasting life. And because of your diligence and your faith, and your patience with the word and nourishing it, that it may take root in you? Behold, by and by, ye shall pluck the fruit thereof, and ye shall feast upon this fruit even until ye are filled, that ye hunger not, neither shall ye thirst. Then ye shall reap the rewards of your faith, and your diligence, patience, and long suffering waiting for the tree to bring forth fruit unto you. Shall we believe in one God?
that we might obtain this fruit. Also, in what manner should we plant the seed or exercise our faith? Do you remember what Zenos, the prophet of old, has said concerning prayer or worship? He said, Thou art merciful, O God, for Thou hast heard my prayer when I was in the wilderness, and in my field, and when I did turn unto my closet. Yea, and Thou hast also heard me when I have been cast out and have been despised by mine enemies. And it is because of Thy Son that Thou hast been merciful unto me. Therefore, I will cry unto thee in all mine afflictions, for in thee is my joy. For thou hast turned thy judgments away from me because of thy Son. Do you believe those scriptures which have been written by them of old? Believe in the Son of God. That he will come to redeem his people that he shall suffer and die to atone for their sins, and that he shall rise again from the dead, which shall bring to pass the resurrection, that all men shall stand before him to be judged at that last and judgment day according to their works. I desire that you shall plant this word in your hearts. And as it beginneth to swell, even so, nourish it by your faith, and behold, it will become a tree springing up in you unto everlasting life. And then, may God grant unto you that your burdens may be light through the joy of His Son. Amen. You have desired of my beloved brother that he should make known unto you what ye should do because of your afflictions. And he hath exhorted you unto faith and to patience. And we have beheld that the great question which is in your minds is whether the word be in the Son of God or whether there shall be no Christ. I will testify unto you of myself that these things are true. I do know that Christ shall come among the children of men to take upon him the transgressions of his people and that he shall atone for the sins of the world. For the Lord God hath spoken it. For according to the great plan of the eternal God, there must be an atonement made or else all mankind must unavoidably perish Yea, all are fallen and are lost and must perish, except it be through the atonement. And it is expedient that there should be a great and last sacrifice. Not a sacrifice of man, neither of beast. It shall not be a human sacrifice, but it must be an infinite and eternal sacrifice. This is the whole meaning of the law, every wit pointing to that great and last sacrifice. And that great and last sacrifice will be the Son of God. And salvation to all tent blast sacrifice bring about the over and bringeth about that they may have repentance. Mercy hands of justice and in certain arms of spot exercises no faith demands of justice. May God into faith and 
that she begin to have cry for his might continue in prayer and run out to continually around after the if ye turn away the needy and naked and visit not the sick and afflicted and impart of your substance if ye have to those who stand in need behold your prayer is in vain this life is the time for men to prepare to meet god the day of this life is the day for men to perform their labors I beseech of you that you do not procrastinate the day of your repentance until the end. For you cannot say when you are brought to that awful crisis that I will repent, that I will return to God. Nay, you cannot say this. For that same spirit which doth possess your bodies at the time that you go out of this life, that same spirit will have power to possess your body in that eternal world. Contend no more against the Holy Ghost, but receive it take upon you the name of Christ and worship God in whatsoever place he may be in in spirit and in truth and that you live in thanksgiving daily for the many mercies and blessings which he doth bestow upon you amen Come in. Are your brothers with you? Yes. Good. First, I want to speak with just you. Come in. Sit down. I am grieved for the iniquity of my people. Their hearts begin to wax hard. I have asked that you all gather that I might give each of you your charge separately concerning the things pertaining to righteousness. My son, give ear to my words. I swear to you that inasmuch as ye shall keep the commandments of God, ye shall prosper in the land. His holy angel made these things known unto me. Alma, why persecutest thou the church of God? Go thy way and seek to destroy the church no more, even if thou wilt of thyself be cast off. Three nights will I rack, even with the pains of a damned soul. Alma. But I remembered hearing my father prophesy concerning the coming of one Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to atone for the sins of the world. When my mind got hold upon this thought, I cried within my heart. Oh, Jesus, thou Son of God, have mercy on me. When I thought this, I could remember my pains no more. And oh, what joy and what marvelous light I did behold. My soul was filled with joy as exceeding as was my pain. From that time, even until now, I have labored without ceasing that I might bring souls unto repentance, that they also might be born of God and filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Lord doth give me exceedingly great joy in the fruit of my labors, because of the word which he has imparted unto me. Many have been born of God, therefore they do know of these things of which I have spoken, as I do know. Now, I command you that you take the records which have been entrusted with me. I also command you that you keep a record of this people upon the plates of Nephi, for it is for a wise purpose that they are kept. And these plates of brass have the records of the Holy Scriptures upon them, which have the genealogy of our forefathers. 
has been prophesied by our fathers. They should be kept and handed down from one generation to another and preserved by the hand of the Lord until they shall go forth unto every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, that they shall know of the mysteries contained thereon. And now, if they are kept, they must retain their brightness. I understand. By small and simple things are great things brought to pass. Small means in many instances that confound the wise. These records and their words brought this people unto repentance. They brought them to the knowledge of the Lord their God and to rejoice in Jesus Christ, their Redeemer. And who knoweth but what they will be the means of bringing many thousands to the knowledge of their Redeemer. Now these mysteries are not yet fully made known unto me, therefore I shall forbear. Remember, my son, and learn wisdom in thy youth to keep the commandments of God. Counsel with the Lord in all thy doings, and he will direct thee for good. And if you do these things, ye shall be lifted up at the last day. Now, my son, I have somewhat to say concerning the thing which our fathers called the Liahona, or compass. It was prepared to show unto our fathers the course which they should travel in the wilderness, and it did work for them according to their faith in God. If they had faith to believe that God could cause that those spindles should point the direction they should go, it was done. Therefore they had this miracle and also many other miracles wrought by the power of God day by day. Nevertheless, because those miracles were worked by small means, they forgot to exercise their faith and diligence, and then those marvelous works ceased, and they did not progress in their journey. Just as surely as this director did bring our fathers to the promised land, shall the words of Christ, if we follow their course, carry us beyond this veil of sorrow to a far better land of promise. See that you take care of these sacred things. See that you look to God and live. Go unto this people and declare the word and be sober. I will, Father. Send for Shivan. Father. Shivan. Son, I trust I shall have great joy in you because of your steadiness and your faithfulness unto God. For as you have commenced in your youth to look to the Lord your God, even so I hope that you will continue in keeping his commandments. For blessed is he that endureth to the end. I know, Father, and I will. Sit. I know that you were in bonds. I know that you were stoned for the word's sake. And you could bear all these things with patience because the Lord was with you. Remember that as much as you shall put your trust in God, even so much you shall be delivered out of your trials and your troubles and your afflictions, and you shall be lifted up at the last day. There is no other way or means whereby man can be saved, only in and through Christ. And now, as you have begun to teach the word, even so I would that you should continue to teach, and I would that you be diligent and temperate in all things. Use boldness, but not overbearance. See that you bridle all your passions, that you may be filled with love. See that you refrain from idleness. I will do my best. May the Lord bless your soul and receive you in the last day into his kingdom to sit down in peace. 
Now go, my son, and teach the word unto this people. Please send in your brother. Father? Granted. I have somewhat more to say unto thee than what I said unto thy brother. For thou didst not give so much heed unto my words as did thy brother among the people of the Zormites. Thou didst go on unto boasting in thy strength and thy wisdom. Father, and this is not all, my son. Thou didst do that which was grievous unto me. For thou didst forsake the ministry and did go over into the land of Siren after the harlot, Isabel. And we hid as it were our faces from him. She did steal away the hearts of many. But this was no excuse for thee, my son. Know ye not that these things are an abomination in the sight of the Lord? Ye most abominable above all sins, save it be the shedding of innocent blood, or denying the Holy Ghost. I would to God that ye not been guilty of so great a crime. I would not dwell upon your crimes to harrow up your soul if it were not for your good. But ye cannot hide your crimes from God, and except ye repent, they will stand as a testimony against you at the last day. My son, repent and forsake your sins, and go no more after the lusts of your eyes, but cross yourself in all these things, for except ye do this, ye can in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. Counsel with your brothers. For thou art in thy youth, and ye stand in need to be nourished by your brothers. For when the Zoramites saw your conduct, they would not believe in my words. Turn to the Lord with all your mind, might, and strength, that you lead away the hearts of no more to do wickedly, but rather return to them, and acknowledge your faults and that wrong which ye have done. I'm so sorry. I would say somewhat unto you concerning the coming of Christ. It is he that surely shall come to take away the sins of the world. Yea, he cometh to declare glad tidings of salvation unto his people. I perceive that thy mind is worried concerning the resurrection of the dead. Yes. How can it be? Behold, there is no resurrection until after the coming of Christ. There is a time appointed that all shall come forth from the dead. There is a space between death and the resurrection of the body, and a state of the soul in happiness or in misery, until that time which is appointed of God that the dead shall come forth, and be reunited both soul and body and be brought to stand before God, and be judged according to their works. The soul shall be restored to the body, and the body to the soul. And every limb and joint shall be restored to its body, even a hair of the head shall not be lost. And then shall the righteous shine forth in the kingdom of God. But an awful death cometh upon the wicked, for no unclean thing can inherit the kingdom of God. It is requisite with the justice of God that men should be judged according to their works. If their works were good in this life, they shall be restored unto that which is good. If their works were evil, it shall be restored unto them for evil. But if they have repented of their sins and desired righteousness until the end of their days, even so they shall be rewarded unto righteousness. And thus they stand or fall. For behold, they are their own judges, whether to do good or do evil. Koi Henson, do not suppose, because it has been spoken concerning restoration, that ye shall be restored from sin to happiness. I say unto you, wickedness never was happiness. Now 
Therefore, my son, see that you are merciful unto your brethren. If you do all these things, then you shall have mercy. You shall have a righteous judgment restored unto you. But is it not injustice that the sinner should stay in a state of misery? The great plan of mercy could not be brought about except an atonement should be made. Therefore God himself atoneth for the sins of the world to bring about the plan of mercy, to appease the demands of justice, that God might be a perfect, just God and a merciful God also. And the atonement bringeth to pass the resurrection of the dead, and the resurrection of the dead bringeth back men into the presence of God. And thus they are restored into his presence to be judged according to their works, according to the law and justice. Justice exerciseth all his demands, and also mercy claimeth all which is her own. And thus, none but the truly penitent are saved. Do you suppose that mercy can rob justice? Nay, not one whit. And now, my son, I desire that you should let these things trouble you no more. And only let your sins trouble you with that trouble which shall bring you down unto repentance. O oh, my son, I desire that you should deny the justice of God no more. Do not endeavor to excuse yourself in the least point because of your sins by denying the justice of God. But do you let the justice of God and his mercy and his long suffering have full sway in your heart? to bring you down into the dust in humility. Oh, my son, ye are called of God to preach the word unto this people. And now, go thy way, declare the word with truth and soberness, that thou mayest bring souls unto repentance, that the great plan of mercy may have claim upon them. May God grant unto you, even according to my words, It is about AD 34 in the Americas. Great storms, earthquakes, fires, and floods witness to Jesus Christ's crucifixion in Jerusalem.
Samuel's prophecy. to this people. Woe unto the inhabitants of the whole earth, except they shall repent. And many great destructions have I caused to come upon this land and upon this people because of their wickedness and their abominations. ye that are spared, because ye were more righteous than they. Will ye not now return unto me, and repent of your sins, and be converted, that I may heal you? Behold, I am Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And the scriptures concerning my coming are fulfilled. I have come unto the world to bring redemption unto the world, to save the world from sin. Therefore whoso repenteth and cometh unto me as a little child, him will I receive. For of such is the kingdom of God. For such I have laid down my life, and have taken it up again. Therefore repent, and come unto me, ye ends of the earth, and be saved. O ye people of these great cities which have fallen, how oft have I gathered you, as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and have nourished you. O ye house of Israel, whom I have spared, how oft will I gather you if ye will repent and return unto me with full purpose of heart? Lord Jesus Christ. Is it over? The darkness is gone. have been fulfilled.
city bountiful. We're here. What is it like? It's wonderful. Do you have all you need? Do you have enough food? Nephi? <laughs> My friends! Somehow the Lord saw fit to spare us. Nephi, the whole face of the land has changed. I thank the Lord your lives were spared. Timothy! Please help our good friends get clean clothing and shelter. You're safe now. Bless you. Kuman? Kuman on hype. Please find food and shelter for these good people. Bless you. Son, in whom I am well pleased, in whom I have glorified my name, hear ye him.
Behold, I am Jesus Christ, whom the prophets testified shall come into the world. And behold, I am the light and the life of the world. And I have drunk out of that bitter cup which the Father hath given me, and have glorified the Father in taking upon me the sins of the world, in the which I have suffered the will of the Father in all things from the beginning. Arise and come forth unto me, that ye may thrust your hands into my side, and also that ye may feel the prints of the nails in my hands and in my feet, that ye may know that I am the God of Israel and the God of the whole earth, and have been slain for the sins of the world. Nephi, come forth. I give unto you power that ye shall baptize this people when I am again ascended into heaven. Timothy and Jonas, come forth. Likewise, Methoni and Mathaniha, Kumin and Kumin on high. And Jeremiah. And Shemnon. Jonas. Zedekiah.
and Isaiah. I give unto you power to baptize this people. On this wise shall ye baptize, and there shall be no disputations among you. Whoso repenteth of his sins through your words and desireth to be baptized in my name, on this wise shall ye baptize them. Behold, ye shall go down and stand in the water, and in my name shall ye baptize them. And now behold, these are the words which ye shall say, calling them by name, saying, Having authority given me of Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then shall ye immerse them in the water, and come forth again out of the water. And after this manner shall ye baptize in my name. And according as I have commanded you, there shall be no disputations among you concerning the points of my doctrine, as there have hitherto been. He that hath the spirit of contention is not of me, but is of the devil. But this is my doctrine, that such things should be done away. And this is my doctrine, and it is the doctrine which the Father hath given unto me. And I bear record of the Father, and the Father beareth record of me, and the Holy Ghost beareth record of the Father and me. And I bear record that the Father commandeth all men everywhere to repent and believe in me. And whoso believeth in me and is baptized, the same shall be saved. And they are they who shall inherit the kingdom of God. And unto him will the Father bear record of me, for he will visit him with fire and with the Holy Ghost. And thus will the Father bear record of me, and the Holy Ghost will bear record unto him of the Father and me, for the Father and I and the Holy Ghost are one. And again I say unto you, ye must repent and become as a little child. baptized in my name, or ye can in no wise receive these things. This is my doctrine, and whoso buildeth upon this buildeth upon my rock, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against them. Therefore go forth and declare the words which I have spoken unto the ends of the earth. Blessed are ye if ye shall give heed unto the words of these twelve, whom I have chosen from among you to minister unto you and to be your servants. And unto them I have given power that they may baptize you with water. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.